Welcome to Clicks and Coffee. I'm Alexander, and here we dive deep into the journeys of entrepreneurs and marketing innovators. Each episode, we uncover the challenges, triumph, and unique strategies of our amazing guests, giving you valuable insights and inspiration. Our goal is to build a community of growth-oriented professionals ready to learn, collaborate, and thrive in the ever-evolving world of digital marketing. So whether you're here for the latest trends or looking for that next big idea, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. And today we've got Dr. Nisha Kohli, the CEO of Corp Stage, joining us. Dr. Kohli has been a figure for years in the corporate sustainability consulting business, and I can't wait for you to hear her story. Let's dive in. Nisha, thank you for being here. Thank you, Alexander, for this invitation. I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Um, it's my pleasure um, to introduce myself. I I originally come from India, uh, have overall experience. I've worked in this field for about 23 years. Um, I mean, maybe more than that, 23 maybe. Yeah, but uh, come my basic qualification I did was chartered accountancy. That is like the toughest exam which we had to give in India. And uh, after that, I, uh, be, be, due to some personal situations, I moved into academics and I had to do PhD, you know, I was required to do, I had, you know, to continue in that profession, but I really enjoyed doing it. And I was lucky that my PhD was during um, my finished at the time of subprime crisis. And uh, the topic was about corporate governance and uh, financial valuation. So it was really, really appropriate at that time. I was able to publish a lot of papers around that time, and uh, it really boosted my, you know, career. So, because of the publications, not not because of the crisis, but because of the publications, uh, yeah. And then I continued with this consulting related to social responsibility and corporate governance for uh, for the like almost like sixteen years now. And lately, like uh, beginning of the COVID or early, little earlier than COVID, I decided to launch a software or develop a software. I am not a technical person. I, I do not know how to, I mean, I could code a little bit, but not so much. Um, but I am more from the space or the field of sustainability or ESG. And uh, I could bring in all these years of my research and, you know, learning from the clients uh, in this software. And so I was excited to develop it. And uh, that's where Cop Stage is today. So I'm the so founder of Cop Stage. Yeah. So could you explain to, 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 to our listeners what exactly is ESG and, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about it and like, why is it important today more than ever? Yeah. So uh, I'll, uh, I would like to take the audience back to, let's say, early 2000s when Enron thing happens, like 2002, 2001, when Enron happened. So a lot of investors lost their money. And then Sarbanes-Oxley Act came into place and, you know, internal audits and things like that happens, happened. Around that time, investors also became a little more cautious about their investments, investing in companies. So um, they started caring about corporate governance issues in companies. And that's where the G part became very popular in, in those days. The S part came uh, around 2003 or four, where, you know, uh, again, the principles of corporate governance, they started saying that, uh, emphasizing on social responsibility. So companies that do care about the society, about communities, they were really valued. So investors started focusing, even though it was not mandatory, but then investors started focusing on social responsibility and governance. But after 2016, I would say the focus on the E part became very, very important because of the Paris uh, Agreement and the climate agreements that, you know, the pact happened in 2015. Um, if, um, the E part, the environmental part, uh, so ESG as a role of environmental social governance. So the E part, was in the historical days or traditional days, I would say, was uh, taken into account in environment management accounting. 
and we have a standard ISO 14001. So companies used to follow, but nobody, I was a, I was a chartered accountant. So when during audits and all, we never really bothered about EMA. Okay, the report came, we signed and, you know, things were very usual. But after the Paris uh, Agreement and this, so investors started focusing on the E part as well. So ESG became very popular. And then corporate sustainability term was also like, it's about now one and a half decades that companies have started looking at the social responsibility, governance reports, and later they called it corporate sustainability reports and things like that. So now the situation is that a lot of funds are getting invested by investors in the companies which really care about E, S, and G. Now, investors look at it from the risk point that they are eliminating their risk because companies which care about the environment, companies which care about the SNG as well, they are they will manage their capital well. So that's the angle which investors have, and that's why they they actually you know basically what do you say evaluate companies based on those parameters. But on the other hand, these corporates are were not so aware that how she how much they should take this ESG so seriously so that part I mean even though they were doing social responsibility it was like okay we donated we, we did some charity that's social responsibility done we have board of directors in place governance done you know those kind of things were there and compliance is there for corporate governance so they did really didn't have to it was a checklist approach so the G and S were already happening but when the investors started flowing, like trillions of dollars started flowing and here corporates became very serious about corporate sustainability and then they started looking at ESG. That's where different frameworks also, you know, became highlighted. So we have like SASB, GRI, ISSB. Nowadays we have this universal framework which which now companies are have to follow. So Stock exchanges, government regulators have become very serious about these compliances that companies have to follow these ESG, you know, frameworks and uh, different company, different countries have come up with their, you know, principles and frameworks. So that's how things are happening in the market right now. So the, the last part is, is fairly new. And uh, so it's also, you know, one of the most important, especially after the, the Paris Agreement. So, yeah. it, you know, I imagine that there are multiple companies that do consulting of ESG. And mm -hmm. um, what is the one thing that you believe is making Corp Stage uh, a little bit more unique than other consulting companies? Yeah. So when I came up with this idea of having a software, I first reached out to people who are in investing field to multinational, you know, some of my friends who work for multinational companies and things like that. I presented my idea in a form of PowerPoint and then, you know, shared with them. So a couple of things that came as feedback was, oh, who will adopt this? You know, why do we need such software? Companies will always go to you know, auditors or PwC and big fours. I mean, no, I should not say. Um, um, companies will always go to big fours and, you know, things like that. But who, why will people adopt your software and things like that? But, and it took just about two years for the market to be flooded with ESG softwares, ESG consultants. And now you see, if you search profiles on LinkedIn, you'll find ESG everywhere. So everybody, like this field has, it's not just a few firms. I would say millions of people are into this field now. And the market of ESG has become very chaotic as well. Yes, we understand that climate change is for real. And, you know, we need a lot of solutions. We need to collaborate. But then there is also a lot of, uh, there's a lot of players who, were not into this field, but they have entered into this field and uh, things are like really chaotic right now. And so how do you, so 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 how do you uh, market yourself as, I would say like one of the original or real <laughs> consultant, because I'm sure that you have a lot of people that like to put on their card, you know, that they are in ESG, but it's not that. So how, how do you, I would say like, make sure people understand that you, you, you are, one of the better companies. 
Yeah. So what happened was when you know, when we started building the software in 2021, uh, late 2021, like November sometime, we thought that, you know, the, the platform we design, we thought of was a big one. It's, a, it's an ecosystem that we have built. So uh, we knew that it will take some time for us. And then uh, in November 2020, also the, the concept of ISSB was formed. So I was like, literally waiting for the ISSB compliance to come out and see how the regulatory environment is changing and what kind of new regulations are coming. So we knew that it is going to take time. In during that phase, we thought, why not utilize this time to build our consulting or basically my previous company, I integrated my all the consulting services into this company, CopStitch. So we thought, why not use this brand name to market those services uh, as as you see that we have our another website esgconsultingservice.com so during the development phase we thought we'll take these services to the to the corporates to the con to the people who will use those so one uh, marketing strategy that we adopted was a negative marketing you know strategy negative oh, sorry negative expense marketing strategy is the grit awards um it had two purposes. One is, of course, the brand building. And that was not the primary motive, though. The primary motive was to build our credibility because this is purely a knowledge-based industry. And then if you, um, as I said, that there are so many players right now, so you have to prove that, yes, you have the knowledge, you have the expertise. For that, you need to showcase. And then I took a plunge. I said, I am going to organize a global event and, uh, you know, no matter what, and it was a startup, we, we hardly had any funds or anything. And then we said, and my partners were also saying, how can we do this? Are you, have you, you've gone crazy? You know, how will you do this? <laughs> and I said, no, I've just uh, committed and I, I've called the, you know, VIP guest, uh, the chair of jury. I've already, you know, announced, I, 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 I can't, you know take a step back I have already you know gone forward so you have to support me so they supported they said okay we'll we'll we are there if something wrong goes then we will be there so it was a big uh you know organizing a big conference like that two days conference calling a lot of speakers and attendees and and people who had never and it was the first time so grit awards nobody had heard about and uh, how do you do that? How would you prove that grit awards are valuable? So uh, luckily, because uh, I had during COVID times in the lockdowns, I was doing a lot of webinars with ESG, you know, experts and asset managers and various players. So those relationships worked out for me. I invited them as jury members and speakers, and I created the event. And uh, of course, there are other uh, friends of mine who came together as volunteers, and they helped me. And we put together a world uh, uh, ESG World Summit and GRIT Awards. The GRIT stands for Sustainable Growth with Resilience, with Intention and Innovation, leading to transformation. And we chose the mascot as Butterfly. And uh, luckily, we got nominations from 25 plus countries. And then, uh, I mean, corporates from different countries. And then uh, some $20 billion companies and some even startups, they applied. And uh, it was a great event. We did it like hybrid, virtual and physical. And uh, it was really like a life-changing I mean, I had two events in my life. It was life-changing. One is the PhD and the second one is the <laughs> Awards. <laughs> so it was like a total transformation of myself. You know, I did it, you know, and, and I did it profitably. So you build a brand without spending your money and, you know, making money on that. So but it's, it it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, you're still spending money because it's your time, but it, you mean like you didn't, you know, spend extra money. It was just really creating. So it's pretty funny that for a, um, software to create, you know, like the way that you found to market it was to create an in-person event uh, yeah. and, and award ceremony. So are you planning on keeping that uh, uh, award event every year? Yes. So uh, you rightly said that a software company organizing it even and the name itself, Corp Stage, 
you know, it just makes it confusing that we are an event organizing company, you know, stage, you know, so like that, a lot of people get confused. And, and in my speech, when I, you know, when the event starts, I, when I talk and I say, we are not an event management company, we are doing this because we have the expertise to create curate sessions to invite speakers related and to have agenda and discussions, uh, which are very high, uh, which are very deep. So a lot of lot of events they take place, a lot of webinars are there. But then uh, I noticed that those were only superficial levels. So I wanted to really curate those things which were burning issues and things like that, which was a success. And the other thing that we brought to the event was sharing sustain sustainable stories. Uh, one thing which I mean, if you have time, I would like to highlight, and that's again a very very, very important thing that it did was like one of the large federation or cooperative from India, a government-owned organization, they wanted to apply for the award. So they made a presentation to me, uh, although we had a full like objective type questionnaire where the, it's a smart questionnaire where companies are scored, shortlisted, and then the shortlisted applications are taken to the jury members. So the jury are again high class, you know, known experts in ESG and they evaluate and they give back the report. We compile the report with our own uh, knowledge and we share that as a uh, report health check to companies. That is our value add for the, and that's how we prove our credibility. So in that case, they made a presentation and then when they were showing the presentation, I was saying, oh, you contribute to SDG 1, SDG 2, you do this, you do this. So I was very happy that that project was really, really sustainable. And then I, I urged them to apply. I mean, they applied, but then they said, we already have so many government awards. Why should we apply to yours? I said, you apply, but not for yourself. You apply for the people who actually do it. So I would like to see, uh, and the project was about like the government used to buy minor forest produce from the tribal people, indigenous people sitting under the forest selling their produce in India. You would imagine if you have some picture, you've seen some things. So government would buy at minimum selling price and then give it back to them for processing. So they organized uh, the 1.3 million women into self-help groups. And then those women used to process food, package it, and then sell it. And that those were products were sold on Amazon. So government provided a lot of R&D, patenting, technology and things like that to support those women and also the forest produce and maintaining the forest and trees. So it was a wonderful project. And then I said that, OK, uh, you you have won as, an, as a managing director of that federation. You've won a lot of awards, but why not bring those women to Singapore and, um, you know, highlight your project? You will get. So they brought four tribal women uh, who never traveled by bus, who never traveled by train, but they directly sat in the aeroplane and came to Singapore. And I interviewed them on the stage. And uh, it was wonderful. Like a lot of people had tears in their eyes. And the entire village was oh. watching that event. And a uh, lot of youth, I mean, a lot of other ladies and children were uh, excited to, you know, participate next time. So, it was a wonderful and the outcome of that, that, you know, some companies came forward and they wanted to help. They wanted to take their products as exports, you know, from India to other countries and things like that happened. So it was a wonderful thing that we did. It is not just, you know, proving our credibility in terms of the knowledge, but also helping the society, helping or impacting the indigenous people who are, you know, and I went actually... So it, uh, so we donated some laptops from Singapore. We I went to that village and those women came running to me and they said, we can, how you from India can speak such good English and stand there on the stage and do this? They were inspired. Like I said, okay. <laughs> so it's threefold. You, you, you're helping your company, you know, inspiring, you know, people to, to do things and, uh, and, and helping also the companies that, got the awards and so what were the uh, what was the, the 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 results of that that award like how did that uh, improve i would say the brand awareness of corp stage and um did that really help launch the web the the, the software 
Uh, yes, uh, in in some respects, I would say yes. Um, some comp we we actually build good relationships with the nominee companies and the speaker companies who came to the event, and then we were able to talk to them about our other services and the platform. So platform actually actually was delayed in coming out, um, and now uh, when we reach out to them. Uh, uh, the, we are not, I would say, not so useful or, or I would say not so relevant for large companies like $20 billion as of now, because uh, not because our platform cannot serve them, but because these large companies were already doing sustainability reporting. And then because they are so big, so huge for them to change to new systems or new software is yeah. a difficult task. So that's one obstacle that we are facing with large companies. However, with, with younger companies or startups, it is really working well. And then it's it helps them to begin their ESG journey, reach out to financials, to the bankers, because bankers ask for this information. Or, you know, if they're selling their products, a lot of time, like you, you mentioned about the house that, you know, you build sustainable. So a lot of companies have to put the labels that, yes, they are sustainable, but then, you know, they have to integrate sustainability measures into their products so that they become more sustainable and they can sell it, right? So buyers are asking for sustainability. Bankers are asking for sustainability. So, you know, our impact is coming uh, by helping the SMEs and startups and even mid-size op mid companies who are not yet required to do you know, ESG as far as regulation is concerned. So we are helping those kind of companies. And so um, so to kind of summarize a little bit what you're doing now, so you created an award, an award ceremony to help your business. And yeah. then I see that you're also doing a lot of content. What other mm -hmm. type of, of marketing do you do and how do you measure, I would say, the, the success of each um, of each you know, type of marketing that you do or, you know, each ideas that you have? Yeah, so we do a lot of content marketing um, and I'm personally being a researcher, you know, an academic. I like to write myself. So I have my own newsletter, uh, which is separate from the company one. Uh, but whenever I just get a weird thought, I just put it, you know, I just write it. And uh, for our company's sake, we, we we also have a podcast, which again, you know, we launched a Sustainocast 360, the Cop Stage Radio. And we invite experts or founders or different projects. Like last podcast, we had a carbon credit project from Amazon Forests and the Mexico region. So we interviewed and we talked about communities, carbon credits. We have authors, you know, in sustainability field who have written books, et cetera. So that's what we do as content marketing, again, to prove our expertise and credibility in ESG space. Uh, otherwise, like we like blogs, we write, we share a lot of posters on LinkedIn and social media. And those posters are uh, sometimes uh, talking about our products, but a lot of times also talking about general awareness and news about ESG. Yeah. So really what the marketing, the, <clears throat> the type of marketing that you do is really brand awareness, top of funnel, making sure people, first of all, are educated about, because as you said, it's a knowledge-based business, yeah. and then make sure that they get the, the they, they see how knowledgeable you are, and then also make sure that people understand what you guys are, are are doing as as far as a company, so it's it's really it's really top of the funnel. Do you do any any ads or anything for to to promote your software? Yeah, so right now we haven't started any ads for our software. Uh, we we are planning to do that very soon. And uh, for Grit Awards, yes, we did that, and uh, we also rely a lot on email marketing. So. Email marketing works well for us, particularly for, uh, actually, we also organize live courses. If you see our website, you know, we have some live courses and uh, that is another way of uh, talking about our platform. Uh, but more, it is about the passion that I carry for, you know, sharing and all that. So again, those ideas, when it comes to my mind that yes, people should know about, let's say, 
um, there is a the U U.S. introduced SEC guidelines for ESG, and they were totally they were quite different from CSRD, which is European based compliance. So I came up with a master class on how does SEC differ from CSRD and ISSB? So comparison of these three guidelines. So these this master class is like three hours. But it's very good for building relationship with people who attend because lots of them are consultants or company executives who attend these masterclasses and they learn about it. So it works well for building relationships. And during that, you know, one masterclass which really ran well was the 10 step toolkit of CSRD. So in that, the 10th step is about ESG digitalization on how do you achieve that? So, you know, we talk about the tool. And then when I talk about the steps, actually, our platform has all those steps integrated, which, again, you know, is very helpful for companies. So it sounds to me that you are uh, you have infinite amount of ideas on how to 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 market uh, to market your your company. Does exper does experimentation plays a good a, a big part in how you come up with like new ideas because you know what would I have so so do you try a lot of things and then measure it and then stop it or you just say like I'm just gonna do all the projects and uh, and just keeping doing them until I really see it's bad or how how does that work coming up with new ideas how how do you test new ideas Yeah, in terms of measurement. Uh... You know, I think you asked this question previously as well uh, a few minutes back is about uh, some we, we do measure analytics from the social media platform uh, about, you know, how are we doing currently, if you notice, um, since we haven't done any ads or, you know, uh, did not have, I would say, a proper marketing team in place. So we had challenges of, you know, curating the content with proper ideas and flow, et cetera, like scheduling the post and many things. Those were not happening. And right now we are in the process. Actually, we have finished setting up a marketing team right now. And then, you know, things are slowly moving in as a corporate would move in terms of marketing. So that is, you know, currently happening. Uh, for our email also, we were like, earlier doing it like okay in this email is from cop stage team but uh, later our our marketing team they came up with an idea okay let's use iris and iris is iris stands iris is a greek god which stands for transformation so uh, you know we'll go ahead with iris teaching things and iris talking about various issues various things so and that's how we are bringing some innovation in our marketing techniques and uh, yeah, so email marketing, as far as all the analytics are concerned, it has worked well for us. I said that, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so do you have any exciting upcoming projects? I know we talked about a lot of things and you're doing a lot, but I'm yeah. curious, you know, because it sounds like you, you, you're you doing so many things between, you know, webinars, podcasts, award ceremony. Uh, is there any any exciting new project uh, about the company that uh, you would you would like to share? In terms of marketing, you're asking. Then yes. Or in terms uh, of yeah, any 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 exciting project that's you know coming on, online very soon that you would like to share that you're very excited about. Yeah. So uh, our platform is very holistic, and uh, I wish I could show you that so you would know more about it. So it's like. It's like a you know uh, social media platform for sustainability, which has communities, marketplace, and also like a you know a subscribe subscription based model where the link becomes activated once the company subscribes to that, so that they can manage their ESG journey. So um, for the community side, we have a lot of new communities which are coming up and uh, we have recently you know taken a team of community engagement and then uh, they are coming up with ideas of how to engage different communities and different society or neighborhoods and schools and colleges so we are excited about those ideas and uh, we hope that we will be able to you know shake a bit of the digital market digital media you know about that um, that's one thing and uh, as I talked about webinar, but that was only in the COVID times, which I okay. did because everybody and later on people got saturated with webinars and then 
you know, it was, it took a lot of effort to build that engagement and invite users to attend the webinar and hardly, you know, people would attend because they would expect recording out of this and it was not good for the, you know, speakers who would come and speak. So what we decided, we, we came up with podcast. And now uh, as a marketing uh, thing, we would like to organize um uh, ask me anything so that is the kind of sessions we are coming up with where we will keep it open so there's no scheduling um i mean it is a fixed slot in every 15 days if somebody has any question related to esg we are very open like it's a free consulting we are going to provide to people uh, so that's what we have come up as a new marketing like a thing. town hall yeah, like it. Did you did you start that, or you're going to start that? No, going to start that. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. When 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 is the first date? Very soon, about okay. next week or so. Yeah. Okay, exciting. And how how are you inviting people? Like, what which platform are you using for that? Of course, we will. Uh, the reach for the email is good, but otherwise, all the social media networks we will use. To talk no, I mean, about... I mean what, what, plaf what platform are you going to use for, for people to come and ask questions? Oh, it will be Teams call or Zoom call. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it will Try be to like keep it simple. Keeping simple, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. That's, that's, that's very, that's, you know, I talk to a lot of people about what they do, but I think it's the first time that I see so many ideas, uh, so many ideas for promoting a software. That's, that's very, uh, very exciting. Um, and so what is your favorite app or tool that you use daily? Like what is one thing that you could not work if you didn't have it? Or like one of your favorite thing that not email, you know, but like a, a specific app that you have that you love to use every day? I think it's WhatsApp. Um, yeah, we tried, uh, like, of course, for work, we use Teams a lot. Uh, for, for managing the you know our our teams and channels etc but for quick communication with the team members and even with everybody like family members and everybody i think whatsapp is the best app that we have so it works really well uh, for communication and all that so i really love and have you have you, have, have you thought about using that for marketing with now with whatsapp business I know that has come up and then uh, I keep getting messages um, for what, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, $1 per day marketing, you know, for, for using yeah. WhatsApp. But I don't think I will use WhatsApp for because I don't want to bug people and uh, like spam people with that. Um, so. Yeah. And yes. do you have one little secret trick you would like to share with us about you know, how do you like one little secret about how do you manage your marketing or how you manage the awareness of your company? One thing that you would like to share that not everybody is doing, but uh, something special <laughs> that you do. Then it won't be secret, right? <laughs> hmm. But how, how do you, for example, like come up with all, all the ideas that you that you come up with? Because it's it's pretty impressive to come up with all of those ideas. So how do you guys um how do you guys you know brainstorm on ideas on how to bring awareness to corp stage Actually um I would say two things one is that I keep up with the market uh, by staying on LinkedIn as well as you know I have created Google alerts for some keywords that really help me to keep me myself up to date in the field that I want to that's one thing and uh, Secondly, uh, our team, uh, when like today evening also we had a marketing meeting and we were brainstorming and then our debate was that because Grit Award is coming up in October and then we really need to promote our platform because competition is picking up a lot. So what should we do? Which What should we focus? So we came well, after about 15, 20 minutes of brainstorming, we came up with an idea that it both can be combined together. So let's do it. And then it was a good idea. And uh, I think it's a team members who bring in a lot of new innovation and ideas and brainstorming with the team really helps. So I would, yeah, for, for other entrepreneurs, yes. I would suggest that, you know, do that very fast if you are a founder 
uh, build up your team. So it will really help you. And well, that's uh, your secret trick is your, is a great team. <laughs> yes, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and it's a good uh, secret trick. I it's think not... the, the the bigger secret is, or at the 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 icing on the this thing is of the trick is that employ or take young people because this you know young people will bring in a lot of creativity. So, um, I mean, I I don't hesitate to work with even like high schoolers because I know that my children, you know, they went to international schools and then when they talk to me, they have they are full of ideas all the time. So I totally encourage and listen to youngsters and then take ideas or scratch, you know, help them to scratch their brains and then come up with ideas. So it's really helpful. And also being an educator, I've always worked with youth. So I really, you know, value that. So that's my secret, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. So, and <clears throat> so, I have a question I like to ask every guest on the on the podcast: is mm -hmm. what are you excited about in the world of digital marketing, and what are you worried about? Excited about the way things are moving, like you know, you have Instagram and TikTok where you can share anything, and people. Um, I mean, anybody can become an influencer today. That's Oh, that's the excitement. You can share what you're thinking and influence other people. Worried about is the same thing if you are sharing negative things. And then, you know, and another thing which is making people is uh, addicted to these, you know, Instagram and TikTok channels. Like people are just scrolling without looking at it. And it's basically yeah, impacting their brains. So, when I see my children also, um, both I have got boys and then when they look at their phones, they're they are laughing on their own and they're just, just, and then one day, you know, my son, I visited him in Austin just now. So a few days back and then he said, mom, if you're getting, I want you to sit and relax. I said, okay, because he, he sees me working all the time. So then he says, mom, you should relax. So I said, what should I do when I'm sitting and relaxing? He, should, he said, why don't you watch reels? I said, watching reels will not relax me. It will make me more tired because you just keep scrolling and then listening to different stuff all the time. It's variety of stuff, right? So it is tiring as well. So that is what I'm scared about. Where and so, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I agree with you that that the great th the great thing about social media and 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 TikTok and Instagram is that you can take a business like Scorp Stage and and boost its awareness, you know, exponentially compared to even 15, 20 years ago. Um, yeah. But at the same time, yes, it's it's always a little scary, and uh, we need to figure out a, maybe maybe that's going to be a new letter in ESG is going to be. Uh, <laughs> You know, already uh, you know, you, digital you, you, ESG. Uh, I, I, you know, I coined that word after reading a few research papers that digital ESG is a thing, and we really need to have digital governance. People are scared of AI, and uh, I, I would like to add, you know, even though I spoke about the scare that I have from Instagram and TikTok, but the new scare that has come is the WhatsApp uh, AI, that the little circle thing which is there in the air. WhatsApp app. And a uh, few days back, I was talking to one of my team members as I use, we use WhatsApp for our team. And then, you know, we were talking about how to boost our Instagram channel. We were talking about it. And the next day on my Instagram, I saw, you know, how to boost my Instagram channel. All those ads were popping up. So I was scared. And then, yes, if it's listening, everything, and uh, I don't know how it is happening or whether it's really happening through that, but it's really scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's the, the, the goal is uh, how they get you on the platform more and more usage yeah. of the platform. Yeah. All I right. mean, they can script any kind of language and uh, AI can, you know, generate ideas on how to bring people <laughs> to the platform. No, for sure. <laughs> Nisha, it was truly amazing to talk to you today. Um, I'm really excited. So I'm really excited to see what you're doing. I'm really, really looking forward to hear more about Corp Stage 
see more about corp stage and maybe if whatsapp is listening to me uh, you know i'll see it on my on my facebook and instagram feed but uh no so corp stage amazing amazing platform uh amazing story and so where is the grit award taking place this year uh it's again in bangkok okay so if you guys want to navigate you know travel to bangkok and and uh listen some very inspiring stories uh you can come is there a website because i know the website of corp stage is corpstage.com so c o r p stage.com do you have a dedicated website for the grit awards yes it's esggritawards.com esggritawards.com so you can check it out um and i really encourage anybody to learn more about esg because that's really is the now is the you know it's it's what people should be now but it's also working on on the future and and you know making sure we um, we create policies to help enjoy our our world and 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 have a better a better life so nisha thank you so so much for what you're doing thank you so much for being here today with us and uh, i wish you tremendous luck in your business thank you very much thank you for having me here thank you